All right, Math 30-2, today so we're going to look at combining the laws of logarithms. <clears throat> so here are the three laws we learned the other day, the product law, the quotient law, and the power law. So having studied those, done some questions using those three laws, let's look at example one. The students were asked to express 4 log 2 base x minus the log of 8 base x in terms of a single logarithm. Three students did this. Only one of the students has determined the correct answer. Determine which student is correct and explain the errors made by the other two students. So I'd like you to pause this uh, video and then try and do that. All right. So if you had a chance to look through this, we would see that Shane's work is correct. He's done everything right there. Emma tries to go about it a different method. Uh, she uses the power law, brings the exponent in to the argument, uh, gets to this step correctly, but then she incorrectly applies the quotient law. So going from there to there is incorrect. What she should have done is said the log base x of 16 divided by 8. All right. So at that step, if she'd done that correctly, she would have got the correct answer of log of 2 base x. All right. And Clayton's work Right off the bat, Clayton made a, made a mistake. Looks like he was trying to do the same thing as Emma over here, but he said that f 2 to the 4th is 8, which is incorrect. So the log of 2 to the 4th base x minus the log of 8 base x. Looks like what he was trying to do, but 2 to the 4th does not equal 8. 2 to the 4th equals 16. Had he got that right, he would have went 16 divided by 8, which would have been the log of 2, then he would have been correct. Okay. Use the law of logarithms to write each of the following as a single logarithm. So I'm going to do example A the same way Clayton, sorry, the same way Shane did his. I'm going to bring the exponent inside uh, with the argument. So the log of 16 to the exponent 1 half, base A, subtract the log of 8 to the exponent 1 third, base A. This isn't the only way you could do it, but this is the way I chose to do it. I know that 16 to the exponent 1 half is the same as saying the square root of 16, which is 4, and 8 to the exponent 1 third is the same as saying the cube root of 8, which is 2. And I can use my quotient law and write this as a single logarithm, log base A of 4 divided by 2. So that gives me the log base A of 2. All right. Looking at example B, write this as a single logarithm. Well, first I'm going to say log A subtract the log of E to the fifth. Let's use my power law to bring this 5, coefficient of 5 as an exponent on the argument, and minus the log of A squared. And I can write this as a single logarithm. So I've got the log of A, and I'm subtracting the log of E to the fifth, so that means I'm going to divide by E to the fifth. And I'm minusing the log of a squared, so I'm also going to divide by a squared if I write this as a single logarithm. And I can simplify the fraction in the brackets. a and a squared simplify, so I'm left with 1 over e to the fifth a. So the common log of 1 over e to the fifth a would be the simplest form. Example 3, write the expression as a single logarithm, then evaluate it. So, step one, I am going to write the log of 4 base 6 as 4 squared base 6 by bringing that exponent, that coefficient as the exponent inside. And to that we're supposed to add the log of 2.25 base 6. So I can write that as a single logarithm. Log base 6 of 4 squared, which is 16, multiplied by 2.25. And I can go ahead and multiply inside the brackets. So log base 6 of 16 times 2.25 is 36. And I can now rewrite that as the log of 6 squared, base 6. And with our rules, my power rule says I'm bringing that 2 out front. And I know the log of 6 base 6 is 1. So I've got 2 times 1, or that value is 2. Example 4. <coughs> If the log of p base 5 is 12, determine the exact value of the following. Well, a common error that people make here is they want to write this in exponential form and say 5 to the 12th equals p, which is correct. 
but that's a very large number and it's hard to work with. Let's just leave this as it is and see what happens if we do that. A says 5 times the log of P base 5. Well, we're told the log of P base 5 equals 12, so this is like saying 5 times 12. So 5 times 12 is 60. Part B, if I use my product law, I could say the log of 5 base 5 add the log of P base 5. Now, we know the value for the log of 5 base 5 is 1, and we're told the value of the log of P base 5 is 12. So 1 plus 12, this has a value of 13. And example C, I could rewrite this using the product law, the log of 25 base 5, add the log of P cubed base 5. So I can rewrite log of 25 base 5 as the log of 5 squared base 5. And I can bring the exponent and the argument out in front as a coefficient and make this 3 times the log of P base 5. And from previous work, I know the log of 5 squared base 5 is 2. And 3 times the log of P base 5, again, the log of P base 5 is 12, so this is 3 times 12. So 2 add 36 gives us a value of 38. Let's have a look at example 5. If the log of x base a is 2, prove that the log of 32x squared base 2 is the same as 5 plus a. So again, step 1, I'm going to change log of 32x squared base 2 into a sum of two logs using my product law. So log of 32 base 2 plus the log of x squared base 2. And that's supposed to equal 5 plus 2a. And so the next step, I'm going to change 32 into 2 to the fifth. And I'm going to take the log of x squared base 2 and make that the log of x base 2 and bring the exponent down in front of the logarithm as a coefficient. And that's supposed to equal 5 plus 2a. And now I know the log of 2 to the fifth base 2 is 5. And I've got 2 times the log of x base 2. Well, the log of x base 2 is indeed a. So I've got 5 plus 2 multiplied by a is the same as 5 plus 2a, and that's a true statement. So you have your assignment. Let's give it a go.